Come on, we are kicking off. I appreciate you guys joining joining in with us. Come on, as you guys enjoy the 21 days of, of prayer and and fasting and and now we're we're going into the drone board season um, here at Celebration Church. And we'll be doing this every second and fourth Monday of the month. So hey, if you if you sign up for the group, um, you'll definitely get the reminder. You'll get the reminder text. You'll get the reminder email. And we're we're carve out this time together. I I I don't know about you, family, but I I was so blessed by our time spent well together during the 21 days of prayer and and fasting. And we we'll use this time. We we'll use this sacred space to come together. And and here, here here's my passion of of what what is the drawing board? To to me, family, the the drawing board. Is when we come together, we, we, we put everything on the board. May, maybe you're a meeting person. You like writing on the board. Or, or, or maybe the drawing board could be for, come on, all, all of my athletes out there. We know X's and O's, um, the execution of the play. And what the drawing board is going to do is, is when we go a little bit deeper, we, we unpack just a little bit deeper to hear what God is saying. That there's going to be times when we come together. And we're gonna we're gonna go the extra mile in uh, from the Sunday message. Let's let's actually talk about it. Let's let's have a healthy discussion around what God has spoke to us on Sunday. And to be honest, sometimes hey, we, we're gonna pivot. Hey, maybe there's some things, some some hot topics that we can definitely come together. I know me and myself, Pastor Brenda, we have some amazing ideas that we want to share and and have some healthy conversations around. And it's going to be very impactful. So I, I definitely um, encourage you, hey, spread the word. If you can do that, spread the word. If you know how much it blessed you, hey, begin to share the link and, and let people know. But we'll definitely have it on demand as well. Because, you know, hey, maybe you can't make it every 7 a.m., but we're having it on our YouTube channels. And we have some ideas for podcasts for, for the folks who love driving or, or while you're working out. We're, we're going to look to get it to you in different ways. But as we begin to jump in, family, I, we're in this amazing series. I, if you can, you just put that in the chat. If you are enjoying our February series called Money Woes, I, it's been blessing my soul of, of just diving into God's word and what God is saying around generosity and stewardship when it comes to our finances. And we, we, we kick-started last week, if you remember, family, we, we kick-started of talking about the heartbeat of generosity. Come on. The, the heartbeat of generosity. We begin to deal with the heart. Man, if, if our heart is not beating towards generosity, we're, 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 in, we're just not in alignment of what God desires, in alignment with his principle, his, his keys, his, his heart. Our father is a giver. Come on, somebody put that in the chat. Our father is a giver. So we are a giver. If, if my father gives, I give. If my father gives patience, come on, anybody going to need some patience on, on, on Monday morning today? And we, we're going to give out patience, not because of the outcome, but here it is, because my father is a giver. My father gives out forgiveness. My, my father gives out, he, he's generous. And whatever my father does, he's looking for his kids to, to, to model as well. So this is why we're kicking off this series and we begin to unpack. But I, I really want to get into um, yesterday, excuse me, yesterday's message. I believe yesterday's message was just so insightful of, of, of what God is speaking about. And I want to have some healthy conversations around this, around managing our, our, our finances. Come on, somebody. Managing our finances. And, and I love what God has been saying. He's been speaking it to me. And, 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 and God is saying, hey, maybe you don't have a, a, a vision problem, Anthony, around your money. Maybe you actually have a, a, a preparation problem. Come on. A preparation, a management problem. Come on, I, I believe a lot of us, we don't need more money. Come on, somebody. I, I know you've been praying, God, send the wealth, bring me more. And sometimes we actually don't need more. We just need to manage better. Yeah, yeah. We need to manage better. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to, how to manage what you have already given us better. 
So for this series, family, we've been we've been diving into Proverbs 11, verse 23. And that's been our, our main scripture. Um, as you guys know, when I go into these sermon series, God, he gives me a main scripture. And we kind of we kind of move from there and see what the Holy Spirit loves to say. And in, in this scripture in Proverbs 11, 23, it it says the world of the generous. Come on, we talked about this yesterday. The the world of the generous gets what? It it gets larger. Yeah. But but the but, but the Bible teaches us that the stingy, ah, yeah, yeah. The the stingy, the stingy world gets smaller and smaller. If 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 you think that no one on this call, or maybe you're listening to this later, we all can suffer from stinginess. Yeah. Not not just your not just in your childhood, but in your adulthood. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We all can wrestle with being selfish at times. It's called our flesh. Yeah. Your flesh rises up in you. You're, it's a warfare going on inside of you. You're, you're trying to do good, but evil is always trying to get the better hand of you. And this is just not in, in other areas of our life. This also plays out in our finances around generosity, around biblical principles that, that, hey, if I just say this for me, this is going to make me better. But God has been speaking a mighty word to me. And as we're speaking on Sunday, he said, Anthony, I, I didn't call you to be a reservoir. I have called you to be a, a, a river, a stream. And, and this is why we, we talked about this. This is why money is a current. It is currency. It, it is designed to flow. So as you're taking notes and, and, and you're processing through, the, through, through this month, when it comes to managing your money, it is just not about what you can keep for yourself. Biblical principles, here it is, family. Biblical principles is laid out so it can be a design to flow. Mm. This is principle. So this, this is why when I use the word principle, it, it, we can see it through scripture. We can see the Abrahamic blessing that God has laid out in Genesis even play out in how you manage your money. Come on, somebody. He told Abraham, I, I'm going to bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. I'm going to bless your family and not just your family. I'm going to bless your family in such a powerful way that everybody else around you is going to be blessed, that this is going to be a generational blessing. See, this is a principle laid out in, in, in Genesis, and we see it flows all through the Bible. It's a principle. That God wants to bless you. He wants He wants it to flow through you. So we gave we we gave three principles. I'm going to teach the other. I actually have seven. I have seven keys when it when it when it comes to to managing managing your finances. And I'm going to recap the first three that we talked about yesterday on on, on Sunday, and we're going to have a conversation about it. And then I'm going to give you the the other three. And I have one more. I actually have seven, and I have one more, and I'm going to actually I'm going to talk about that one on this coming Sunday. That's a little drip. Come on, that's the inside scoop for our, for our, our 7 a.m. crew. And I'm going to talk about it this this upcoming Sunday. Uh, that last key, but the first three that I want to talk about, we we talked about when it comes to managing. The first one is this. Come on, great managers seek first. I believe this is powerful. I, I, I because. It's all about the mindset here. We talked about the heart last Sunday, dealing with the heart motive, but, but this week we, we dealt a lot with the mind. When we change our mindset, this is, this is trajectory for your life. When you have the mindset that what belongs to me is not mine, it belongs to God. Mm. You, you handle things a little bit better when you understand that this does not belong to me, this belongs to God. God, my finances belongs to you. God, I'm part of your kingdom. I, I'm a son. Come on. I, 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 you're a woman. I'm a daughter. Come on. I, I'm part of your kingdom. And you have entrusted me with something that belongs to you. And when you release it to me, my mindset goes to this family. 
I am a manager. I'm not an owner. Because when I'm an owner, I, get, I, I do what I want to say. I move over here. I'm in control. This is my assignment. This is what I do. Now, nobody can tell me anything. Come on. But when we are connected to God, and God says, no, I entrusted you with something that belongs to me. I trust you that you will make the rightful decision that you won't just keep it. You will let it flow. Yeah, you, you will let it flow. And so why? So we begin to say great managers seek first. And here, here's how you build a healthy structure. You invite God into the conversation first. That's my prayer this year for you. That God will not be invited to the conversation less, but God will be invited to the conversation first, my God. Sometimes we can get caught in a rhythm or a pattern where we seek the attention of other people first, that we, that we run to their safety for them to be our savior. Maybe they can share the right wisdom. Maybe they can connect me with the right person. Maybe they can have the right resource that can come in our life. And we can have, we can create these habits we can create these rhythms and these routines where we run to people first. And hear me when I say this. We are a church. Come on, celebration. You guys know me. Groups just launch. We love healthy community. We will always push that. I will always say, hey, find your people. But not at the expense that you are finding your people that, you, that we don't run and seek God first. I want to find my people through the order of seeking God. Yeah. Mm. Because sometimes when we don't seek God and we we run to people, we run to the wrong people. Come on, that's a whole nother sermon series. <laughs> and so that's why we want to carve out time of seeking God. God, how do you want me to manage this? God, how do you want me to invest this? God, how do you want me to secure and plan or save this or begin to be generous with it? God, what do you want me to do? Spending time with God mm -mm, can, can, can help us avoid so many pitfalls that we have fallen into in our life. Come on, just raise your hand. Raise both hands, both feet. <laughs> we all have tripped and fumbled and stumbled in certain areas of our finances. And after we recover, we said, man, if I would have just spent more time with God, this is probably something I would have avoided. And so this is why it's very important to, to seek God, because we said this yesterday. We said it's all about the flow. I want you to catch that. I, I believe there's a flow that God has you in and no flow, no anointing, no flow. There's no blessing, no flow. That, that There's no multiplication that can happen. Remember this family, God can only bless what you release. When it's in my hand, God cannot bless it. But when I release it back to his hand, God can touch it. He can multiply it because remember that we're going to unpack that a little bit more um, this coming up Sunday, that God is a multiplier, but he can only multiply what's in his hands. That's why we said on Sunday, this is the best posture you can give God. Not this posture, fists closed, but this posture, palms open. Mm. In my time, palms open. With my finances, palms open. With my heart, palms open. With my mind, palms open. With whatever you want to do, God, I, I want to live a life in this posture, not this posture. And this is what I believe, family. This is what I believe. I believe God is breaking that the spirit of selfishness off of our lives. This is why we talked about stingy because we all can be selfish in certain ways. Maybe, maybe, maybe certain things happen in our life that created a selfish pattern. Maybe we've been treated a certain type of way that created a selfish pattern. Can I say it this way? Maybe we've been exposed to certain things that had that created this pattern. And here's what I mean by that. May, maybe you have been raised mm, in, in a household through exposure. This is all you know. So even when it comes to your finances, I only been exposed to this. And whatever you have been exposed to, we will always replicate. I need you to hear that. So a lot of times our mismanagement 
has, has it's not really sometimes not our fault is what we've been exposed to. But here's what we need to do. We need to shift the exposure. We, we, we need to shift the exposure to the new light. We need to shift the exposure from the old mindset, the old history, the old pattern. And we need to turn to his light and catch his revelation and catch his insight so that we can be exposed to better. Your life is not over just because you were raised incorrectly. Yeah. Your life is not over because maybe you didn't come from money. <laughs> your, your life is not over because you don't have the necessary resources. Your responsibility now is to turn to the right exposure and allow his light to, to open up your mind and open up your eyes. And this is why we call in the series Money Woes, because we want God to say what we want us to say, whoa, to God. In other words, we want to be enlightened in, in a, such a powerful way that there were certain things that we used to look at that we no longer see anymore. We see God. We see his way. We see his pattern. We see his behavior. And that's what God is saying. The other one was this. We talked about sowing first. And, and this is powerful. This is powerful because great managers sow first. We, before you go, you got to sow, right? I, I need you to catch that. Wherever you are going, God will cause you to sow first. Whether that's in your time, whether that's in prayer, whether that's financially, whether that's with your talent, your, your skill, wherever you are going, sow first. If you're, if you're planning for a, a, a new career, how can I sow in this direction? If you're planning to be married, how can I sow into a, 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 a married couple already so that I can glean from them? Mm. Hey, maybe you're getting ready to start a business. You want to, you got to sow something of where you're going. So this is a principle and this is what we are laying out. We're just not talking about finances. That's our main subject. But the principle is abroad. It is not Pacific. It is just not, it is just not locked in a category. It is actually can be used in our life because the sowing and the reaping principle is used all over, not just in your finances. If you want more peace, what? So peace, right? You want more patience? So patience. The scriptures tells us if you want to be refreshed, go and refresh others whatever you're looking for you have to sow in that area to go and the third point is this before we jump in the, in the next three is great managers secure first and, and this is powerful because we talked about proverbs 13 22 it says a good man leaves an, an inheritance to his children's children and this is what i believe i i believe this is a powerful moment in our service I, I felt it all week. I felt it right before I hit the stage. I felt it right when I was on the stage. I believe God is saying, I'm breaking the mindset of the old so that the power of the transfer can happen in your life. I'm breaking the generational curse in your life so that what was what has been stored up will, 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 will touch the next generation. Let, let us not be a generation that we only withhold for our generation, and it doesn't carry over to the next generation. Allow God what touches me to touch the next. Come on, somebody. That's a life where we say, let it flow. Let it flow. Let, let it not just stop with me, God. Let it touch the kids that I would never meet, that they would just read about Anthony, that their great, great granddaddy, that he did amazing things, that he, he loved God, he loved his family, he, he loved serving, but he left breadcrumbs, my God. He, 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 left, he left something, he left a legacy. And when I say legacy, I'm not just talking about money, I'm also talking about wisdom and knowledge. Let, let us leave something for the next. That's so powerful, so the power of the transfer, so great managers do this. We, we, we secure and we secure, we save in a now so that we can secure in the future. I, I, I don't want to just win the day in the now. I want to win the future as well. I believe God gives us such wisdom and revelation that we can store up so much blessing for others to secure the future. 
I believe I, I, I believe in that God is going to show you wisdom on, on how to invest better, how to plan better, how to get out of that debt better. Because when we when we get underneath his alignment, God is going to show us in a powerful way of what he wants to do. So now I, I want to jump into I want to spend the rest of our time in these three in these three points here. And then we're going to break out and then, uh, then we're going to actually we're going to talk about it. If you're taking notes, the next three is this. This is a powerful one. So we talked about sowing. Sow first. But I want to add to that. I, I want to add to that. The next one is this. So consistent. Need you to catch that. Let's not just sow first, but let's sow consistent in the same direction. So when we want peace, we just can't sow one day of peace and think peace is going to be enough. If we want, if we want more, if we want more, if we need more patience on our job, we can't just have one seed one day of patience. What we we have to sow consistently because where God, where, where we what we need from God is an area of our trust that God is challenging us in. So here's a farmer. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. A farmer does not sow just one seed. A farmer sows multiple seeds consistently with the hope, the expectation that, you know what, at least one of these seeds is going to catch ground. It doesn't make any sense, family, for a farmer to, to sow one seed and sit back in his rocking chair and just wait for that one seed to take root. He's putting everything in this one seed. No, the farmer would take the apple seed and he was so what? Multiple apple seeds with the expectation. And so, so what, what, what am I saying? When we trust God, we don't stop at the one. Yeah. When we're trusting God, we don't stop at the one. We stay consistent in this pattern. So even when you don't see the fruit, you're still sowing. Yeah. Mm, come on. If, even when you don't see the fruit from it, you know that it, the work is being taken place in the under. Yeah. That the work has been taking place in the under, and you know that the seeds are in the ground. You probably, you just can't see what's happening, but you know that God is moving. I, I love this scripture in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, it says this, For God is the one who provides seed for the, for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. I catch that scripture. God gives seed to the sower. He does not give seed to the eater. He gives seed to the sower because he, he, he wants you to sow it. Ask yourself this question. In my area of my life right now, even in my fan finances, what does it look like when I sow consistently? Mm. God, how, how, God, how are you teaching me in this season to live a life of managing my finances better where you're showing me the biblical princi principles on how to live out a life where we are sowing consistently? This is a principle. I'm, I'm, I'm keep bringing it back. Because this is just not tied to your money. This is a broad principle. It is the heart of God. My next one is this. My next one is this. Spin practically. See, so see, we were laying down these principles about managing our money. Managing our finances better. We just said so consistent. But now spin practically. In other words, spin feasibly. In other words, we have to live a life where, where, where we're just not spinning reckless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. We, we're just not taking our money and doing whatever we want to do with it. See, the scriptures tells us this. It says this in Luke chapter 14, verse 28. It says, but, but don't begin until you count the cost. For who will begin construction on a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation 
before running out of money. And then everyone will laugh at you. They will say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Mm, that's in the Bible. <laughs> we have to count the cost. So the question is, the self-evaluation, God, in the area of generosity, in my finances of, of stewarding your, 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 your money, God, how am I counting the cost? How am I counting the cost? Am I spending too much money over here? Am I wasting too much money going and buying Starbucks? <laughs> Come on, all of my Starbucks lovers. Come on, as I have my Starbucks cup right here. <laughs> we got to count the cost. Hey, what 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 can I what can I push pause on mm, so that I can say play to something else? There are things in our life that we actually have more if we actually manage better. I'm bringing that back up. You don't need more. You need more management. I need more management because actually the more is already here. The more is already in the house. We just been fumbling the more. So now the more looks smaller. I'm taking you back to Proverbs. This is why Proverbs teaches us that the stingy world gets smaller. It feels smaller. It continues to get smaller. But the, but, but the life of the generous actually grows. It gets larger because the flow is happening. There's something powerful when you, when you get caught up in the stream of God. When we're caught in his flow. Mm. Yes, there's generosity in his flow. Yes, there's sacrifice in his flow. Yes, there, 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 there's going to be times where you're going to have to say no to certain things in his flow. But his flow, here it is. His flow is not here to harm you. His flow is here to, for you to prosper. His flow is here to actually set you up, but also set somebody else up to win. That's the flow. That's the heartbeat. That's the currency of the kingdom. My last one is this. My last one is this. Write this down if you're taking notes. My last one is this. Is to delight in it. Delight in it. In other words, taste it. Taste it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, when, 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 when we use that word delight, in other words, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a savor. It's a, it's a, you ever had, I'll give you this, this example. You ever tasted a food that was just so good? Mm, it, it was so, it was so good. It's so good that you don't want to eat it fast. <laughs> and, I mean, it's so good. You're like, Ooh, this is, this is hitting the spot. I, I gotta, I, I gotta eat this very slow so I can taste every, every bit of it. I don't want to go through. It's so good. I don't want to go through it too fast. And this is a this is a principle, even when it comes to our finances. In other words, savor it, delight in it. Don't eat. Don't don't release it so fast. Let it sit. Let it see your fruit. Schedule your manage and schedule your 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 finances in such a way where we can see we can see. My God, look what God is doing. Sometimes. We have we 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 have bad habits where the money comes in and the money goes out, so we never get to see the money. We 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 never actually get a, a moment to see that what God is doing in our life. So now this is why we have to structure and set up and seek God first, so that we can set up a great management system, so that we can actually see the fruit. It, 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 it's a hard thing to go through. When you when you don't see any fruit from the work that you're putting in. So my prayer for all of us is that God place us in such a position in our life that God, we can actually see the fruit. Not only see the fruit, we can taste the fruit. Taste the fruit in our finances. Taste the fruit in, in, in our mind. Taste the fruit in our heart. That life is just not passing us by but actually we're in a posture where we can actually taste it. So as I get ready to I get ready to close out in this session and 
we ended this story and, and, and the message on 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 last Sunday. If you haven't, if you didn't get a chance to watch it yet, man, man, God bless me with with just showing showing us um, Luke chapter five. It's actually this part of the the story is in the other gospels as well when Jesus is choosing the first disciples, and I think this is powerful because and, and what God was showing me about they were mending their nets. And I, and I want to bring this back up. God is bringing it back to my attention right now. They were mending their nets and they didn't catch anything. And, and here's why I think this is powerful. Because even when we study the word mending, it, it, it means to restore to its proper condition. And so even when we take that mindset, that illustration, a net, meaning to actually go out and catch the fish. You have a net, my friend. You have a system, my friend, and your system is to go out and catch the fish. But they've been fishing all night. They didn't catch anything. And here's what God is saying, and I'm going to mention it right here in, in our time together for the drawing board. Yes, they went back and mended their nets, but, they, but this time, go read the scriptures. I love what Jesus said. He said, but this time, lower your net out into the deep and watch what's getting ready to happen. Here's what I believe what God is saying for you, my friend, in this season. As we do our part in obedience, as we do our part in obedience, go in to mend the system, go and mend the net, go and get the operation, the vision correct to the thing that's going to catch the fish. But this time, you're just not moving. You're just not moving by your willpower. You're moving through the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus shows up, things begin to change. When Jesus shows up, the expansion is available. When Jesus shows up, something that you tried in the old does not mean it's going to. It does not mean it's going to repeat itself when Jesus shows up. I, I need you to catch that because sometimes, sometimes we don't we don't go again because we have history. You have history with that net, but you don't have this type of history with Jesus because maybe Jesus wasn't on the scene last time. But when Jesus comes on the scene in my finances, I speak this over your life right now that whatever you're walking through, maybe perhaps maybe this time is going to be different. Maybe this time it's going to, when you sow that seed, something miraculous is going to happen because you're just not moving off of a gut feeling. You're moving based on what Jesus is saying. This, that, that's what I want to preach. What is, that's why I say go seek God first and how you should manage because Jesus said this time. And I, and I love what Simon, I love what Simon Peter said. He said, Jesus, he said, master, if you say so. Mm, S O. But when I read it, to be honest, when I was reading it all week, if you say so, S O W. Have, have God ever just touched you in a way where you said, you know what, God? Are you telling me to sow? Sh should I do that? Are you are you sure, God? If you say so. Sometimes I so, sometimes our our minds don't want to do it. That's the flesh rise up. But God is still calling us to it. And here's the thing. You're, you're not going to like every time to be generous. <laughs> but your heart is going to teach you how to love it. Come on. Mm. Because you understand obedience is what brings pleasure to God. Yeah. And God, if you say so, if, if this puts a smile on your face, God, I'll do it. God, is this going to make you smile? I'll do it. It's not even about the outcome, God. I want to be obedient to you because as a son, I want to put a smile on your face. I, I, I want to make you happy, God. I want you to say, good and well done, my faithful servant. That's what it means to manage your finances better. So as we get ready to close our family, I, that's my prayer for, for our first drawing board session is, hey, let's manage better. Perhaps you don't need more, not, not, not more money, more manage. Because when we manage better, God brings the more. Amen? Amen, amen, amen.